Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. I've had this past week off work and most of it I've been able to spend on the garden. I have been doing some tidying close to the house to get some more areas of lawn for our daughter to play on. But more excitingly for you lot especially, I've been able to work on the fire pit area. Now, I would have loved to have done a video every single day, but unfortunately, well, when you see the amount of work that I've done, you'll realize that I probably couldn't have done a video every day <laughs> alongside all that. And I realized that I really had to focus to get done what I wanted to. But I hope as you see it develop, you'll really agree that was worth it. You might remember the fire pit originally as just a crater in the ground, a crater and an idea. Or you might have watched my progress over the last couple of years. 2022, I built the walls up, created these raised Mediterranean beds around it. Last year, I didn't get a chance to do a lot, funnily enough, but I managed to get some plants in there. And again, it slowly started to come together. But I realized earlier on this year that given a full week to concentrate on it in April 2024, I really need to take advantage of that and get the boring work done. The boring work that then lets me get on the exciting bits. So I continue digging that Monday morning and I've got to say, if you book off a week in April to work in your garden here in the UK and you're expecting warm temperatures, beautiful sunlight, you're deluded. <laughs> because quite frankly, we had all the weather here. There's been hail, there's been rain, there's been consistent 40 man hour winds batting through the garden, there's been everything. And that was just Monday. <laughs> it was basically all the seasons in one day. And there hasn't really been a day with temperatures above 12 degrees. But despite that, it's still been t-shirt and short weather because if you're working hard enough, that's all you need. And I have been working hard. I first started off continuing the digging. There was a day and a half digging out the rest of the soil, all that subsoil where it gets a bit claggy at the base of the fire pit. Drainage up that part of the garden isn't a problem. There's plenty of sand under there, but I do know that I'm putting a lot of hard landscaping down and whackering it down so there will be some compaction. So I made sure to put plenty of hardcore down, digging down a good six, maybe eight inches below the finished surface to really pack as much as I can in and create some good drainage. And then it was time for the crusher. And you might not realize, and it's probably hard for me to summarize, but everything in this part of the garden that you'll see now was done by hand. All the soil was brought out. I've now got about a 10 ton mound of claggy subsoil that I need to get rid of as soon as I can afford some kind of skip or whatever. And I brought in 11 tons of crusher, which might not sound like that much, but when you have to bring every barrow 75, 80 meters from the front of the house all the way up there, you soon realize that it's a lot of stuff and there's no chance I can film a video every day on top of that. You'll have to forgive the complete lack of bizarre and random music choices and instead just appreciate where the garden is now. Enjoy this quick video from this morning showing you around the fire pit area and hopefully, like me, you'll agree that this really is a glimpse at what the finished product's going to be. I really am proud of the work that I've done this week. It's been absolutely brutal. My hands are battered and there's no way I could have done it without the years of the strength training behind me, which really toughened me up and gave me that engine to run up and down with barrow after barrow. But I really have enjoyed the week. Hard graft, but hopefully you'll agree it's been worth it. Enjoy. As we head then through the bamboo forest, you'll see a big changes have been made. This is my Mediterranean garden and up there in the distance, the fire pit. So let's have a look around. And the first thing you'll notice is this crusher path I put down. Obviously this isn't the final surface, but for now it gives a nice hard wearing and solid base to whatever paving or bound gravel I choose to use over it. And as you can see now, my desert island border here, full of Mediterranean plants, the huge Dubertulensis wine palms, my magnificent Mexican weeping pine, Pinus patula. And at this time of year, the beautiful Euphorbia John Phillips, which is just coming into flower now. Those just look incredible. Hopefully you can see now that this really is a desert island border. And that mixture of arid planting, beautiful Mediterraneans, and those lovely exotics like this Darzy living here really work well together. So this is an area that I planted up pretty much as soon as we moved into the garden. Most of the main plants went in, and throughout the following year, I added some other exotics. But now, as we've taken away, well, I guess most of the weeds around the edge, it really has started to look fantastic. And to me, this raised bed, it really works so well with this large wide path here. Now, obviously the path will be coming in a little bit more because I'm putting a cobble border down each side, more on that very shortly. But you will notice on this side here, I've gone to the effort of putting in some bamboo barrier. This rhizome barrier really is essential for running bamboos. And for these phyla stackers here, 
they absolutely need it. I've got Spectabilis, which is this one here with the green on the culms. And then over there, we've got Aurea Corlys, a beautiful golden bamboo. But both of these Aurea Sulcatas are runners, which is why before I had to put this path down here, I had to put in a few hours to get this bamboo barrier dug in. Now it's not round the back just yet, but I put it round the sides. So that way I can build this area up here without fear of the rhizomes popping up inside the path, which obviously wouldn't be ideal. This area here is yet to be sorted, but you've got to leave a messy bit, haven't you, for now? But hopefully you can appreciate this side of the garden now. Once those blocks are out of the way, once there's some edgings put down, and once I've topped things up with sand, it really will start to come together and look beautiful. Heading through, you can see on this side here, this is the rose bed that I planted up earlier in the year, and they're coming through just nicely now. I did actually move some foxgloves in from further on the garden. I don't like wasting plants and foxgloves for me, beautiful early season colour, they seem to grow well here, so I'm happy to let them spread around while things are filling up. And another red hot poker there, just adding, I guess really a mixture of those leaves, which looks so great with the other exotics, and also continuing the theme further down the garden. Another red hot poker there. So hopefully late summer, early autumn, this area will be absolutely on fire with colour. But anyway, enough talking about little plants, this is what you want to see. The view is coming together. I've kept the little path over there to our neighbour, which we don't really use, but I like to keep it there with it being a gate. And to me, this view for the first time really is starting like how I want it to. The palms on that side, the beasts over here, it really does create a fantastic entrance to our sunken seating area. Looking at this side here, we've got the palms, they've done all right. That Wagnerianus cross of princeps there is showing a little bit of damage, but I'm sure it will come through just fine. But the main plant in this border has to be the magnificent Butiagrus. This one is the Arius Pather variant. Hopefully the most cold hardy coconut type palm you can grow in places like the UK. And I've got to say, I did just cover it with fleece this winter. It's taken a bit of damage. That was maybe from the winter before. A little bit of spotting on the older leaves, but all in all, it's looking very green and very healthy. And that was just protected with four canes, some fleece wrapped around it, a bit more fleece packed in, and only for the cold spells. Then I left it open so it could get some good airflow. But all in all, the plant in this border including that agave of atifolia, which didn't get protected other than a little pot put over the top of it when it was cold. It's done very well. I don't want to take too many of the weeds off just yet, but as I put the wall in down this side here, I'll be able to remove more of them. The soil's not gonna completely fall apart. I think really, once that wall's finished, once the cobbles are put in from there to there, once I can take out some of those weeds and replace them with gravel, I think this part of the garden really will look fantastic. A beautiful mixture of arid plants, the grasses, some flowers, another Nephophia over there. I'm really excited to see this part come together. My next project over the next month is to get the cobbles in down that side there, down that side there, create a tall wall to really encompass these raised beds here, to trap in all that soil and create some more exciting arid and succulent planting opportunities. But anyway, here is the fire pit. There's plenty to do, but hopefully now you can get an idea of the scale. It's roughly 3.6 meters square. I've still got to stick these copings down, some mortar. But now, even though I've filled it up with cobbles, you can get an idea of how big it's going to be. Over there, we've got some magnificent oak sleepers, which have been, well, I suppose, patiently waiting for their turn to be going in the garden. Those will be forming the benches around the edges of this. So the actual plan is, if I step back a little bit, the plan is to have wooden benches around that side there, looping up to here, and then potentially across there and all the way down this side here. So there'll be plenty of seating, but also due to the extra space I've given this, plenty of room in the middle for the fire pit and or reclining chairs, whatever we want to go for. These are just some of the cobbles that I'll be using. Part of my mission this week has been to clear the area close to the house and there is still about two thirds of the cobbles to go. As you can see, I'm grading them roughly in terms of size. Some of them like these here are pretty much the size of loaves of bread. Some absolute monsters over there. 
and others are more sort of, I guess, generic cobble sized over here. And these are what I'll be using to create that wall. And if I get enough left over to tie the whole area together, I am gonna have them running all the way down that side there, all the way around there. I've got to say, when I got this path down, I came outside and I had five minutes just looking around and it really does feel now like the whole area is tied together. And I'm excited to see when these cobbles go down, it'll absolutely finish it off. And as those roses grow there, as these palms size up and as most of these weeds come out of here, I really am excited to see how the whole area really knits together and has an almost, almost desired garden look. But those cobbles will be all the way down here, all the way up there. And if I do have enough of them left, I would like to continue them onto that path through the bamboo there. But we'll see anyway. If I get some left over, it's not a problem. There's plenty of areas where they can come in. As you can see here, that's Keemrops. Not looking as healthy as it could do, potentially because it's got some of the roots exposed and it is planted a little high. But once this wall's gone in here, I'll really be able to finish it off. Agave Montana there. You didn't see that weed there, gone. That one looking very healthy. The main palms, the huge Djibouti hybrid palm, that's looking very good indeed. And in fact, if I just jump up here, you can hopefully see beautiful, fresh new growth coming through. It's looking fantastic. And over there, we've got the Camerops or Chemrops Humilis Vulcano, which is a monster of a palm. Very wind resistant and again, very tough and hardy. It's looking fantastic. As we head round, just ignore some of the weeds, but as you can see, I am getting on top of the situation now. Looking at it from over here, we've got firstly, that beautiful little Sempervivum there, the gold nugget, such a bright color, really does stand out. That one's only recently gone in, but all the rest of these exotics have braved this last very wet and slightly chilly winter. I've got to say that Yucca Gloriosa Citrus Twist, that is looking fantastic. The smaller Keemrops humilis there, Mediterranean Dwarf Fan Palm, planted that about half a size and it's grown incredibly well. Other than a couple of slightly marked leaves, it really does look pristine. And over that side there, we've got Serifera. So looking through here, it's a bit of a mixed story. The Agave Parii, they will survive, but they don't look great. The Euphorbia Mercenites, fantastic, with that beautiful, vivid lime green color as it's been flowering. So really, I guess most of the plants are looking very good indeed. But there's a couple which, well, let's just say there might be changes. This Brahira Armata, the Mexican Blue Hesper Palm, it doesn't look as good as it could do. And this one was struggling when I put it in the ground, but I do like to give plants another chance. And I'm gonna keep leaving this one here. Hopefully it does okay. But at the back there, I've got a small Trachycarpus, that's a Wagnerianus cross with princeps. I'm not 100% sure whether it's actually the right space for it. As you can see, it's raised up quite a bit and it's gonna be in a very dry, sunny part of the garden. So although I did want some height there between my Nalina over there and that Dazilirian Ceratifolium, potentially that palm isn't the right choice and I might actually go for a Shudapanax, but potentially one of these plants on the ground that I'll share with you now. I don't have an unlimited budget when it comes to new plants in the garden. And now I am a proud father, that budget is shrunk. But equally, I want to get this area right. And whilst I'm not gonna be chucking plants at it, most of the plants I've chosen for around here are very tough and hardy. There's been some changes this past winter. Some plants haven't done very well and others will be going in. So we've got here a beautiful Shamrops or Chemorops Humilis Compactor. As you can see, a very, very tight, compact palm, beautiful leaves, and a very, very stunning silvery underside to them as well. So that one will fit in perfectly. Slow growing, very well adapted to the sun, the baking temperatures and the exposure at this end of the garden. That plant is gonna be a replacement for the Yucca fullifera, which as you can see, is it's completely dead. There's no question that. I wasn't sure whether there'd be some semblance of life down there, but really the whole thing's mushy, it's completely dead. But in reality, that little Mediterranean Dwarf Fan Palm will probably be a better choice for there anyway, because it can survive very well in this raised bed 
lovely soil here but also it's not quite as spiky so going at the front of the border dare i say it, almost a sensible choice the huge hybrid yuccas Triculiana crossed with Linearis, they're looking magnificent. Not a problem this winter, and they're already looking bigger than when they first went in. So those are gonna really size up this year. But there was another plant over there, a Yucca rostrata, which didn't make it. And I'm gonna be replacing it with another Yucca rostrata. <laughs> because Yuccas, in theory, are such a tough plant. Every other one that I've got, so the two at the back there, Rostrata, Rostrata, Thomsoniana in the middle. Every other plant is looking fantastic. Admittedly, the Thomsoniana does have some slight brown at the ends of the leaves, but the Rostrata is generally not a problem at all. And I think that one at the top, which we'll see shortly, potentially the victim of rodent damage, because we do get quite a few mice and rats digging around up here. So I am taking the risk of replacing it with the same thing. <laughs> but if it doesn't grow up there then it'll be time to roll the dice and choose something completely different the cactus that we got from chelsea last summer that is currently living there but it might end up moving around i do enjoy having that rusty metal sculpture look whether it'll live there long term who knows let me know your thoughts but the final two plants i've got which i'm not 100 decided about yet we've got a beautiful cordyline astralis this one I've got to say, magnificent plant. And although it wasn't the cheapest, it was 40 pounds, given how much plants have gone up this year, for that one with a really decent trunk on it, good size leaves, I wasn't too unhappy with that. And here, we've got a yucca aloifolia. That's actually from the palm grower, Vic Silver. That's a lovely plant. And one that I also potentially might use for a place of flifera. I'm not 100% decided yet, but either way, that beautiful shamrocks will be going somewhere here. So, a yucca from Hardy Palms, a yucca from Brigand Center, camera up from Lindham Nurseries, Cordyline Australis Brigand Center, and the beautiful yucca Eloifolia from The Palm Grower. That's where I've got them from because I know a lot of you want to know. But as we head further up, you'll see some more changes. So firstly, and you'll have to excuse this very amateurish video today, we've got my Nephophia. These are the North Yide that went in last year. They're looking splendid. You can see now how they create that almost alo type look to them. Obviously we've got the alo Stritula or Aloeompolis as it's now called. But to me, these beautiful red hot pokers, they capture the same vibe utterly and completely, don't they? I put in another red hot poker there to really tie the whole garden together. I am going big on that theme this year. And as you can see on this side here, We've got my red valerian, Centranthus ruba. They're coming into flower now and they're gonna self-seed around the garden, hopefully, well, I'm sure they will, and really add some late spring and early summer color. But as that sun's just dipped behind a cloud, you'll see I've extended the path up this way here. This was never really a planned path in the garden, but I really like the way you can actually walk around the back here past my huge eucalyptus trees. Now, this eucalyptus here, the Porsiflora, Mount Buffalo, that one is one of the smaller growing eucalyptus. And as you can see, I've crown lifted it to really make the most of the beautiful trunks that are starting to develop. On this side here, we've got my Eucalyptus neglecta, which is a rapid growing eucalyptus. Apparently, they do slow down when they get to around seven or so meters tall. But for me, I'm not growing this plant to get a magnificent tree I'm not growing it to get huge, amazing trunks of beautiful bark. I'm growing it for these massive leaves. And I've got to say the scent coming out of these, whether you've chopped them down a few weeks ago or you just sniff them on the plant itself, they really are stunning. But to me, I want this a little bit bushier. So that's why I've given it a bit of a brutal hack back, chopped about half its height off, and I'm pretty sure you'll never know within a couple of months they grow that quickly. This area has a bit of a mixed bag of results and successes. But first off, we'll look at this. My beautiful eucalyptus glaucescens. Magnificent. This is the one that I actually had uh, ratchet strapped. As you can see, they're still hanging up there. Those did a magnificent job until I chopped them off about a month ago. As you can see, the tree is still leaning a little bit. But I think really it's down to the prevailing winds. But to me, the most amazing thing about this tree is that it was planted, believe it or not, in late summer 2020. 
three and a half years in the ground from a relatively small whip of a plant and already that trunk has got to be six inches across. That really is magnificent. And I'm excited to see just how big it gets this year. I'm only saying that because we're very safe distance from the house. So up here, we've got Euphorbia. I've got a, another mixture of Alliums. Again, you've not seen that bindweed there. Definitely not seen that. Beautiful Alliums coming through. More Yucca Rostratas. But I also made the decision to leave some Fritillaria Imperialis in the ground here because it's hard to remember exactly where you planted them. I thought I'd lead them in because they're not in the way and I do love them. Beautiful flowers. And here, as I've actually piled more earth on top of them, they seem to be flowering quite well. So maybe there is something to plant them deep. Who knows? The Vabascums, I've gone for one there, one over there and one over there where they can get bigger, form huge rosettes this summer and then flower next summer, hopefully. And this was my original rose border here. Got a few different sorts. Got Batsheba, which is gonna be climbing up the tree here. I just need to tie it in. We've got at the back there, a Rosa Glauca and over there, a Morning Mist. Beautiful apple tree. Hopefully the blossoms are gonna to come to something this spring, but let's face it, you can hear for the exotics, aren't you? And up here, things are really tying together nicely. We've got a huge form, a steeper gigantia there, magnificent, huge, great big flowers on it. That looked fantastic backlit by the sun. The olive tree has coped absolutely fantastically with this winter, as you'd expect. And walking through here, I've got to say my favorite plant, even on a dull warning like this now, with that wind, has got to be Chianocloa rubra. Beautiful plant. Just look how amazing it looks in the breeze. Fantastic. And it really sets off the beautiful Yucca rostrata. That one there is a blue swan. These ones I've had in pots for many years now. And this is the one that didn't make it that will be getting replaced. But as you can see, it is completely hollow. So yeah, that's not gonna stand any chances, is it? Completely mashed up. But there are mouse holes all down this edge here. so. Who knows what happened to it? As we pan out, you'll see the view. This part of the garden really is made for the evening sun. Those beautiful summer evenings when the sun comes from this angle here, shining across the garden. Not for dull mornings, but hopefully looking back, you can really see the presentation of exotics. You can imagine what this border will look like when there's California poppies come in later in spring and early summer. You can imagine what that booty agris is gonna to do to that bed over there as it really sizes up. It's done really well this winter. And also you can imagine once I've got those cobble wall in there running off into a distance, to me, I think this really will complete the view. And the thing that really makes it, those huge trees, the Pinus patula and the eucalyptus behind me really do add a sense of permanence and I guess really structure to the garden. So hopefully you can appreciate the view now this isn't the finished article, far from it, but I put a lot of work into creating the boring bits. I had to dig out a lot of earth. Barring that 11 tonne of crusher certainly took some effort, as the front of the house is probably about 75, 80 metres away. Getting those sleepers there, again, that wasn't especially easy, but I really am pleased with where this part of the garden is now, and I can actually concentrate on the more exciting parts, like finishing off the walls and getting the beds planted up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Very quick one, just filmed this morning. But as always, if you've got any comments, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon.